great gadgets for every man. This two and a half gallon cherry can. Unit part 27. This is no. I ordered the best selling car. Allow me to introduce you to. Ten things I bought this month. This ottoman can turn into force. I'm under the water. Please help me. You've all seen them. You know those videos and shorts on YouTube and TikTok showing all of these handy gadgets that you can use in your home and kitchen. Well, every time I come across these, I always think, how easy would they be to actually 3D print and use? Like, is that actually possible so that you can use them practically and, and reuse them again and have them for a long time? Because these are kind of cool products. They're very simple, yes, but I do get mildly satisfied from watching those videos. Well, I'm giving it a shot and I'll see what I can do. A list has been prepared for me by my coworkers to suggest a few of these. I haven't seen it yet. Mildly nervous. But to make things interesting, I've set myself a time limit. So 10 minutes maximum to design each product. And we can see which is better, a sloppy 10 minute design or waiting maybe a week from your online shop to actually get these products. So let's get to it. Okay, first up, we have this foldable silicone pad. I think it's pretty obvious that we need a heat resistant material. So that kind of rules out PLA. Did he just throw it away? Wasn't that bad. Best choice for ultimate heat resistance is nylon, probably. Peak might be overkill for this project. We have a load of nylon in the shop and some that can resist temperatures up to 170 degrees without a load. Um, but nylon is kind of not the easiest filament to print because in most cases it requires an enclosure uh, and an all metal hot end. I want this project to be easy to make, so I don't want to use nylon, but we do have nylons that actually don't require an enclosure, which are pretty good, but their heat resistance is a bit less. We could also use TPU. So probably a little known fact, TPU is generally heat resistant up to 120 or maybe 130 degrees. Uh, it's not often used in these applications because it is flexible. And in most cases, when you want something heat resistant, yeah, you probably want some rigidity with that. There are not that many applications where you would require a flexible filament, but uh, also a heat resistant filament. But this is one. So if it goes up to 120 or 130, that should be fine for saucepans and things like that. Uh, if you're boiling water in a saucepan, then the temperature of the bottom of the pot will not go that much over 100 degrees. Might be difficult for other things, other hot containers that you might use. All right, we'll go with TPU. So we're gonna have to print these arms individually and have holes at the ends and in the middle of them uh, for shafts to go in so that can connect to the other arms and you are able to actually stretch it and, and fold it back. But if we're using shafts, I don't think we can use TPU for that. It should be a rigid filament, but then we need it to be heat resistant. So we need it to be nylon or something else. Um, Mm -hmm. Okay, um, other solution, we could use threaded inserts and screws so that you can actually rotate them around and you can also disassemble it if you want to replace something. That should work. Let's give it a shot. Okay, so first off, we have a cube which we're going to elongate and we're going to subdivide it and we're going to stretch out the edges on opposite sides as well. So it has this angular S look. Now we can bevel the internal edges to give it a more organic look and do the same with the external edges. Now it has this sort of um, organic S look. We can rescale it on the x-axis so it's a bit smaller. Bring in another cube, elongate that as well and bring it right next to it so we can use a boolean modifier to carve out the shape of the other arm so that it fits in nicely. Lovely. We can get another cube, elongate that as well and with the previous cube that we just made we can rescale it and we can also bevel the edges so that it's more organic looking and bring the next one close to it. Use a boolean modifier again so that it's nice and organic. Okay, so now we have three of these parts, which is great. We can copy these and reverse them on the X axis and put them next to each other and they all fit in. That's really nice, yeah. And we can actually carve the middle one in. So everything is now fine on one layer. Okay, uh, next thing we need to do is rotate them a little bit. So they're gonna be angled at about five or 10 degrees. We can do the same with the next layer underneath, except rotate it in the opposite direction. And then we can space it out a little bit so that we know where we're gonna put our threaded inserts and screws. They need to be at the edges uh, of each arm and also in the middle. 
We can actually use the uh, instructions that are on our pages for our threaded inserts about how wide the hole should be for a threaded insert. I can't remember what it is now. I'll have to look at that later. Um, but yeah, we have all of our cylinders and now we can kind of copy all of these and we can actually put in a, a Boolean modifier again so that we have a nice uh, series of holes through each actual arm at the ends. There we go. Okay, we got all of our parts printed and now we gotta go downstairs into the workshop and put in all of those threaded inserts. We're using Ruthex threaded inserts right now, but we also have the threaded insert range from CNC Kitchen. So if you're a fan of Stefan, check those out. We also have their soldering tips for your soldering iron if you're doing exactly what I'm doing. And we also have the volcano adapter, which allows you to use a V6 nozzle on a volcano heater block, which is pretty useful. Doesn't fit. Okay, I think we'll do that once more. Finally, it fits, but we've got to see how it deals with high temperatures. So I've had some boiling water on the pad for a while, a few minutes. Let's take a look. Okay, it didn't stick to the pot. That's a very good sign. Doesn't seem to be any damage. It's very hot, obviously. All right, I think that works. I like how it unfolds like this. That's so cool. It is not as stable as I'd like. It is flexible filament after all. Nylon would have been a better choice, but this still also works, plus it's just way easier to do. It's like one of those grabby devices. Okay, next up is a garlic twister. Uh, I think I can think of another use for this. I'm not doing that. There are, there are tons of designs of garlic twisters and herb twisters and stuff on Thingiverse and printables. Let's see what they have to offer. Garlic twister. Oh, uh, okay. Um, grinder? No, I bet just grinder. Oh yeah. Yep. Mm hmm. Yeah, looks like we got a few on printables too. Um, more traditional grinders. Oh, we have a herb grinder here. Ooh. So this is a food contact item. So we need a food safe filament. And we have Colorfab XT here. This is a blue one. It's PETG based. Although it does burn a bit, bit hotter than other PETG. This one was around 245 to 250. Uh, but it's BPA free, it's styrene free, and it's FDA and EU approved. Uh, so it will print beautifully for this application. I'm choosing this garlic twister, uh, which is exactly what you would expect it to be. And it has a crude relief of a certain part of the male anatomy. Cute. Welcome to 3D printing, everyone. All we need now is Dwayne Johnson's head on it. Okay, let's print it and see how it goes. Okay, I got my printed garlic twisters the human anatomy one and a different one that was on uh, printables, which seems a lot more robust. I'm a little worried about the traditional one. I think it might break, but we'll see what happens. And in my vampire repellent pack, I have my garlic and let's put that in there, see what happens. Ooh, crunchy. Oh, I think it's working pretty well. Yeah, that's not bad. Okay, traditional grinder works. Good job. Okay, let's try the heavy duty one. Also in color 5 XT, by the way. And this one's this one's way like coarser. So we'll see what it's like. Ooh. This brings me back. It's been a while since university. That's good as well. Not as thorough, but it will still work. I would put that in my risotto. Okay, yeah, wow. Top score, 420 out of 10. Nice. So there is one issue with this, and that is that the grinder itself is a wearing part. The more you turn it, the more it rubs against each other, and the more chance there is of bits of plastic falling into your garlic. So the design, awesome. Use, mm, questionable. Okay, what's next? Ooh, okay. So this is, this is an extendable tower rail. This one is interesting. Ah, uh-huh. Okay. All right, so there are, there are 
two ways of doing this. So first you can use the elasticity of the material to stretch the towel over towards you. Um, or you could use a mechanical way, so have like some sort of mechanism inside a, a holder that can extend and then you let go and it retracts again. Uh, but that's really, really complicated from a mechanical standpoint. Um, okay, if we try an elastic method, so I've got some flexible filament here. Uh, this is Recreus Filoflex. I think it's 70A. And it's really elastic, but as you can see, it's not that elastic. That's probably not going to work. This is not our most elastic filament. Uh, I think our most elastic is a 60A, sure hardness, uh, but this is pretty soft. It, it's it's quite elastic, but it's not going to work in that in that sense. So I think we need to use a mechanical method in this case. Okay, so we need some sort of wheel. Oh, hmm. Okay, we could use uh, the same method that is used in mechanical um, power cables. You know, the ones on vacuum cleaners that you pull and then they stay there. And then when you let go, they kind of retract and then spring back up into the mechanism. We could do that. I have no idea what that's called. Let's let's Google this. I use a spring mechanism to provide the retraction force. Okay, a spring. What kind of spring? Oh, okay. That's this is it's called a flat spring, but it I know it as a as a clock spring. Well they're actually super easy to make. Let's get to it. Alright, this is super easy. All we do is create a circle in Blender and then a screw modifier to make this kind of spiral shape. We can create a cone and then shrink wrap that coil around it so it's this conical shape. Then we can select the inner vertices and use proportional editing so that it is all connected and we can extrude it up like we did there. And that's basically it for the spiral. We can use a solidify modifier to actually make it thicker and then we can add this cylinder in the middle so we have a kind of a uh, space for the shaft and then when we have that we can create another cylinder and create a hole for the shaft which there will be a screw going through that's it just so you guys know what i'm talking about this is the spiral shape that we printed it took literally three minutes to design and about 15 minutes to print and yeah basically it is just a spiral and you can extend it like so and then when you let go it retracts ow So we also designed this little chamber for the spiral shape to, to fit in. The spring will go in here. And unfortunately, I put in lots of internal support. And it's very, very difficult to get it out now. Ah! I recently had surgery on my sinuses. Kind of reminds me of that. Sorry. Okay, does it work? Yep, sort of. It droops down a little bit. It's hard to get the elasticity and rigidity of PLA totally correct, but it does work. It does extend. This would be really useful for someone who has Parkinson's or other dexterity issues. Uh, but if you're totally able-bodied, this is a kind of a sad invention, actually. I'm okay with it. It's a bit loud. I'm going to give myself three out of ten. I think I fixed the rigidity problem. Good. It's still loud as hell, though. Okay, what's next? Ooh, okay, so this is a reusable lint roller. This one might be a bit harder. Uh, what are reusable lint rollers made of? This is a Wikipedia article. Reusable lint rollers use elastomers, silicones, polystyrene, ethylene, butylene, styrene as a reusable tacky surface. Material is similar to polymers used in walking toys, such as wacky wall walkers. What the hell is a wacky wall walker? Oh, those things. I remember those. Roll commercial. Coming at you free. Your own wacky wall walker. It tumbles and crawls down walls and even glows in the dark. Okay, it's nostalgia wacky. time is over. Um, so, silicone again. Uh, yeah, the polymer with a thousand uses. I don't think standard TPU is going to work with this one. It's tacky, but it's not really, really, really tacky. Um, what if we modify the TPU, like surface modification, using like a solvent? Let's look that up. TPU chemical resistance, what have we got? So we're looking for something that won't modify it too much, as in, I mean, it won't destroy it. 
Uh, it will just modify it a little bit, the surface of it, I mean. I'm kind of going out on a limb here. Okay, so apparently acetic acid, even at low concentrations of 10 to 20%, is unsatisfactory for TPU. That's, that's a possibility. Could also use cider. Why? Okay, well let's 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 give it a shot, I guess. Yeah, that didn't work. Definitely going out on a limb. Uh and my hands smell of vinegar now. I have no idea how to make this work. Uh hmm, wait a minute. Let's go back to the Wikipedia article. Uh and it said silicones, which we can't print, obviously, but it does say polystyrene, ethylene, butylene, styrene, and that kind of rings a bell. Ah, Sebs. Okay, that's interesting because we actually do sell a Sebs. Recreus Filiflex to the rescue. Okay, so Sebs is, um, it's a TPE. Uh, the difference between a TPU and a TPE is that a, a TPU is polyurethane, which is a whole class of polymers, but a TPE is, is well, it's vague. It just stands for thermoplastic elastomer, which can be basically any thermoplastic polymer that is elastic. So every TPU is a TPE, but not every TPE is a TPU. And this TPE specifically is made out of SEBS, which is a hardwearing polymer, and it's often used uh, as coatings on things like uh, maybe a, a mouse, perhaps. Uh, because it has a good grip, and that's exactly what we want. We want it to be tacky as hell. So let's let's give that a shot. So I have designed two cylinders. So when I say designed, I mean I created a mesh in Blender, but they have a fuzzy skin texture on them, uh, both the same. But one is made out of SEBS and one is made of PLA. And I want to see how well they do competing against each other. And what we do is we just put in the roller into this little little container thing, and then we can see which one is better. So let's test it out. So I think the worst offender that would work well as a test would be pet fur. And I have two cats, and I love them dearly. Get away from my lasagna. But sometimes they can be a little bit furry. So as a test, I have prepared a really furry t-shirt. I have to deal with this every day. Okay, as you can see, it's um, pretty furry. We got both our rollers here, and I want to try out the PLA first. Zero effect, pretty much nothing. Na nada. Even with the fuzzy skin texture, it is, it's basically zero effect. PLA pretty much does nothing. Okay, let's give our SEBS a shot. Okay, yeah, it's working a bit better. It's definitely, definitely cleaning. It's definitely attaching to it. Okay, not bad. I mean, it's not gonna win any contests, but this is definitely a lot better than the PLA. It definitely works, but I don't think it's quite as effective as an actual lint roller. Yeah, four out of ten, maybe. I think the cats win this one. And I, for one, welcome our new feline overlords. What? So we've had differing levels of success with our projects. The silicone pad worked pretty well, although in retrospect, I should have done it out of more rigid material like nylon. Uh, nylon carbon fiber would be nice as well. The garlic twister, also awesome. I'm just not quite sure about the abrasive effect that it has. The towel extender worked pretty well. It was a bit loud for sure, but it worked pretty well. And again, yeah, it would be pretty useful for someone who has mobility issues like that. The reusable lint roller, well, that was partially successful. Didn't clean as efficiently as I had hoped, but it does show the tackiness that SEBS offers. It also shows that SEBS would be a really good filament for a grip or something that you need to handle and make sure it doesn't slip. If I was doing this again, I wouldn't give myself 10 minutes. Uh, definitely not. These were bare bones designs. I'm pretty sure if we had more time, we could do something a little more effective. But that brings us to you. Do you think you could improve on those versions? I'm pretty sure you could actually, but if you do, let us know in the comments below. The links to all of the filaments that we used are also down there. And if you have any questions, then just send us an email or leave us a comment. I will see you next time. Later. I don't even want a towel here.